people align themselves with the forces of progress, well and good. If not, history will take care of them. History! Does the individual count for nothing, then? Very little. Though the object of the revolution is, of course, to increase the general level of human happiness. Will it increase mine, do you think? If you let it. If you persist in your cult of bourgeois individualism, your middle class selfishness and egotism, obviously not. How very severe. So people like me are to be crushed beneath your chariot wheels, are they? <laughs> we should have tanks. You know, I <laughs> hate to say this, but you sound just like the people who sent me feathers during the war. Did they really, sir? Oh, Lord. Don't let's go into that. Why not? There was a certain amount of friction between my sister and his father. Feathers flew in all directions, not only white ones. I was expelled from the bosom of the family. Not that it was anything but a lumpy, bumpy sort of place in the best of times. <laughs> Donald's father was so ashamed of me, he sent me away to labour in Monmouthshire. That's all lumps and bumps. It's very <laughs> nice, Monmouthshire. <laughs> I must say, sir, it's hard to think of you as a horny handed son of toil. Oh, I'm glad the whiff of the bullpen no longer trails about me. Sometimes I think it does. I have to go and have a bath. I'm sure there's some doleful Freudian in explanation, something unmentionable about my body, I expect. Oh, read for it. Lord, no, not allowed stuff like that. Not even under the blankets. But John. <laughs> but it's as well. He's as depressing as Karl Marx. What's that supposed to mean? More depressing, really. One can at least struggle against his score of One can lie down against the juggernaut, as it were, and try to slow its progress. Ah, you do recognise that it is progress, then? But one can't lie down in front of one's subconscious. One can't even find it to lie down in front of. If that controls everything we do, what we call it a very gloomy view. One likes to think one has some control over one's life. For instance, I do, Donald. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, dear boy. I can't bear to think it's either history or my subconscious that's making me thirsty. Any more than I can bear to think I spent two sub eight quiz years up here in Downdale and Monmouthshire, simply at the whim my idea or the forces of progress, do you call them? Yes. You see, I thought there was a moral principle in the world. You know, I believe Chad would like another cup of tea. You see, I thought it was wrong to kill an eccentric view in a Christian society. But I believe one must obey one's moral intuitions, however eccentric and however awkward the consequences. It's those intuitions which separate us from the animal. <laughs> Don't you think? Yes, of course. You say, of course. But Chad doesn't think so. Nor does Freud. They say intuitions are nonsense. So they do with history as well. So there are really bad is there? No. That doesn't worry you. Why should it? It's a fact. Dear. You look pretty silly if the Germans had invaded. Oh, Donald, you're such a chip off the old block. He'll make a splendid Lord of the Manor, won't he? Riding round in his tweed cap, just like the bomb. <laughs> Frowning at them. They'll adore you, absolutely adore you. <laughs> the devilishes have been there since 1543, you know. 1547, actually. More tea? No, I've done so. <laughs> Sir, dear boy, there was something in your lecture. You said nothing was certain in the world except our feelings, the intuitions oh. and so on. Yes. Your feelings change, mind you, all the time. Yes, indeed. Then, oh. well, how do you hold on to anything? Why should you want to? But you must have something. Why? Well, it's chaos otherwise. Yes, but every moment some form grows perfect in hand or face. Some mood of passion is irresistibly real or attractive to us for that moment only. You know your painter, I hope. Dead. Walter Painter of the Renaissance. Not the fruit of experience, but experience itself is the end. Oh, you must read it, you really must. He says the purpose of life is to be at the place where the greatest number of vital forces unite in their purest energy, to burn always with this hard gem like flame. To maintain this ecstasy is success in life. That's wonderful. Is it all right if I go and be sick now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm awfully sorry, sir. You for worry. Oh, but it's the greatest compliment I've been paid in years. To annoy someone so much, he leaves the room. I must be, <laughs> Peter. To burn ever. Always. <coughs> to burn always with this hard gem-like flame. 
Because Chud thinks history will snuff out our little flames like that. But I'd rather think I'd be snuffed out while ecstatic than gutter down in slavish obedience to its dictates. That's all very fine and dark. I don't see. Oh dear. What does that mean? Only that I have to go and take roll call. I'll answer for you too. Thanks. Thanks. It's been fascinating listening to you, sir. Really fascinating. Oh, the pleasure's been mine. It's not often I get the chance to show off to such a charming and attentive young woman. Is it time I went? The taxi will be here in five minutes. My hat? Where did I put my hat? You must have left it with a house man. Mr. Farskell, is that what you call him? Among other things. He did bristle at me, so I don't think I can face him again. He bristles because he wasn't in the war and thinks he shouldn't be. Well, I certainly got the impression he thought I should have been. Donald, be a dear and rest good for me. All right, shall be a minute. Such a, such a very, is Donald quite as bluff and straightforward as he seems? Oh yes, sir. He's got a perfectly good brain, actually, but doesn't think it's gentlemen need to use it. Bachelors have such high hopes for their nephews and nieces. You're certainly not afraid to use your brain anyway. No, no sir. It's a pity I'm not staying longer, actually. Uh, uh, we could have had dinner. <laughs> I mean, I could have gone on showing off. Though, you young men have a lot more to show than me. I don't know what <laughs> Really? Well, perhaps we could continue this conversation some other time. Well, I should love that, sir. And we do have holidays. So you do? Where do you live? Epping, yeah. Just on the edge of the forest. I don't know Epping. But if you ever come up to town... Thank you, sir. Telephone first, won't you? One never knows when one's going to be free. Of course, sir. Dear boy, no need to call me sir. I have a couple of friends that might amuse you, for instance. Harold. Harold. Nichols. Oh, that would be... May I bring a friend? One of these? No, no, someone different. Someone special. Ah, I see. Judge wouldn't like to come, would he? I'm afraid not, sir. Pity. That sort of frankness. So mad, so attractive. I'm afraid his interests <laughs> lie elsewhere. Who's like where? Uh, Judd's. I was just telling Mr. Cunningham how Judd thinks literature is bosh and we all ought to do economics. Oh, Judd. Come on, Uncle Vaughan. The taxi's early. It's time for you to buy me a drink on the way to the station. There's only one thing you young man can think of. Goodbye, Billy. Goodbye, sir. Come on, then, Paul! Of course he does. You don't understand either. 
I'm in love, Jim. And don't talk such utter piffle. <laughs> and taking bad spurks, that's a filthy trick. <laughs> it's not funny, you better take a pull on yourself. I'd rather do it with you. For God's sake, will you stop it? <laughs> I'm warning you, guy, you carry on like this and I'll be looking for someone else to be my number two. Sons, don't be ludicrous. You don't know what's going on. Devonish may be leaving. What? Fowler may be going on to stay on. I thought that might bring you to your senses. Now perhaps you'll stop the stupid nonsense and start acting like a responsible citizen. It can't be true. It can be. It is. I won't stand for it, of course, but I shall be able to resist unless I have the full cooperation from you and Judd. Judd? Why do you think I said that about beating? I have to have another prefect. My God, you are getting sly. You need him too. If Fowler said Klaus, you won't be in 22. God. You are more Judd's friend than I am. I tried and I tried, it's useless. I shouldn't think there's a hope in hell. There must be. Prove your worth for once. Why is Devonish leaving, Martin? Oh, Christ! I hope I can rely on you. The next two weeks are going to be absolutely crucial. We can't afford the slightest hint of a scandal. You really are going to have to take it. Take myself in hand. The trouble is, <coughs> I do so much prefer doing it with other people. Don't you? I don't believe in talking about it. That's not the impression I've got when we've done it together. I said I don't believe in talking about it. Besides, I think we're a bit too old for that sort of thing now. We're supposed to be grown up. By <laughs> it's only a passing phase, all the books say so. You have been reading. Worried, were you? Weren't we all? As a matter of fact, I met a girl last fall. Congratulations. Did she let you do anything? I think she would have done. There wasn't the opportunity. Ah. We fondled. The trouble is, girls are it, girls are it, aren't, aren't very interested in us. We don't have any money or cars. I'm nothing to drive, that should help. Take her to the flicks. Will her parents let you? Hope so. Bet they won't. Parents don't give a damn about their sons, they can be done and ends up with barge poles. But their daughters, off to help a girl across the street and has ten years penal servitude for rape. Well, you can understand <laughs> why. <laughs> girls can't look, can't, girls can't look after themselves. You think we can? Of course. Martin Oak. Well, I do make myself clear. Oh yes, even if we're not actually grown up under that maybe, we must act like it. Precisely. All right then, let it be charades. I say, will a ghastly turn up for the books? Yes. May I have the binos back now, please? Just do try to be sensible. Thanks. You know, I think perhaps I'll be a spy when I grow up. You can keep a secret for two minutes. You'd be surprised. You can't beat a good public school for learning to conceal your true feelings. What's house tea today? Toad in the hole. Oh, hell, and I missed it. You don't even like toad in the hole. You said it tasted like fried toad jam in flannel. That's what I said, yes. But what I really thought. <laughs> I make a very good spy, actually.